Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your own key bindings for Hyperspeed Cube. So the first thing to notice is that if you go to Help Keybinds Reference, um, this shows you the current key bindings and it's interactive. If you press a key, it'll um, highlight what, what's going on um, and it shows you what will happen if you press a key. So this empty set symbol, this circle with a slash through it, means that that won't do a twist yet until you've selected a cell. You've gripped it, as we say, gripping a cell. Um, and now you see that does IL, so it updates to show exactly what move it'll do. And if you grip multiple cells, then they go back to doing nothing. Okay, um, so, uh, and it updates as you uh, press modifier keys. Okay, um, so the default key bindings, first of all, you should try to get used to these um, before you set up your own key bindings, unless you have a scheme in mind and, and you're very confident about it. So the basics is that you can grip uh, cells using the left hand, and um, grip the whole cube using X. So if you grip a cell, then you can use uh, I and K to do those moves, J and L to do those moves, and U and O to do those moves. And if you hold Shift, it'll do two layers at once. Holding X means that you rotate the whole puzzle. Um, but most of your rotations will be select a cell and hit spacebar to recenter it. So here I'm selecting U and pressing spacebar to put it in the middle. Um, so that's your, your basic twists. Um, there's also number keys correspond to layers. Um, this shows an empty set because there is no fourth layer on this puzzle, but if I go up to, say, uh, a 9x9, nine nine, then you'll see all these numbers are filled in. And the same key binds work on a 9x9, nine nine, of course. So I can do cursed things. Um, I'm actually pressing the L key on my keyboard right now, but because this is a laptop keyboard, um, some laptop keyboards will not register more than two key presses, depending on what keys you're pressing. So uh, this is true for some external keyboards too. Um, if you want to buy a keyboard that does not do this, look for a keyboard that has N key rollover, or at least six key rollover. Um, so most laptop keyboards have two key rollover, which means that if you press more than two keys at once, it is not guaranteed that the third key press will register. So I can press L here, but I can't press L while holding four and F. So that's something to keep in mind um, if your keyboard happens to do that. So we have keybinds reference. This is very useful for, for seeing what's going on. Uh, switch back to a reasonable puzzle. Um, to actually customize your keybinds, uh, you go to settings, and then there's these three options. So mouse binds, you can actually change what the uh, mouse clicks do. Um, this is, uh, I don't think anyone's ever actually used this. <laughs> uh, there's global keybinds, which controls things like undo, redo, scramble, um, you can even set up key binds to open puzzles. Um, so you usually won't have to modify these. Um, and then where you really want is puzzle key binds here. So these are the default key binds. This, this window is, is pretty terrible. Um, it's going to be redone in Hyperspeed Cube 2. But I wanted to make this video now so that while HSC1 is still, still out and being used, you'll at least have something to reference. So uh, the way that Hyperspeed Cube key binds works is that you are there's a, a series of keybind sets, and one of these sets will be active at a time. You see, as I click and change which one is active, it'll change what the keybinds reference has. And in fact, if you go to Tools, uh, Keybind Sets here, if you're doing a speed solve or something, you could have this window open and select between sets. Um, sets that have a caret at the beginning will be hidden from this window. So this keybind sets window is a, a handy way to just like quickly switch between sets, um, although there's other options too. So we won't, I'll, I'll keep this open, but um, might not be necessary. So um, yeah, <laughs> so you can select which keybind set. So if you want, say, uh, a default set for when you're doing ordinary twists and a different set for when you're doing RKT that's optimized for that, you can, you can do that using, by making two keybind sets. Um, you might want keybinds that are shared between them. So, for example, here, basic twists, um, I want this to be active in both my uh, default set and my RKT set. Um, and so the way you do that is with a default set selected, I'm going to click the checkbox for basic twists. So you see, as I change that checkbox, this includes the set of basic twists in default. If I go to RKT, similarly, I am including basic twists in RKT, although you can't see it here. So the checkboxes control which keybind sets are like automatically included in that set. Um, so if I select basic twists, it's just these six, six keybinds. Um, so that's what the include checkboxes do. Um, they are, depending on what you have selected here, it'll tell you what sets should be included in that. 
So for actually assigning keybinds, um, I can add a new keybind here to demonstrate that. Let's say I want the uh, G key uh, to do uh, an R U move. Um, well, in that case, I would add a new key with the plus, click here, press G on my keyboard, hit OK, um, and then twist R, and this uses XYZ notation um, so that it's more general um, because there is no U move, for example, on the U cell. So this is RY. And now if I press G, uh, nothing happens. And you might look here, that's because the empty set there. So that empty set uh, means that we aren't selecting any layers. So if you hover over this box here, layer mask string, it'll explain what's going on. Um, the basic gist is that positive numbers count from the outside, negative numbers count from the opposite side. So typically you'll just use one um, for the outermost layer. So now if I press G, you see it does that move, R U. Um, and in fact, you can do any of the um, 24 orientations of the cube minus solved uh, as an option here. There's also like some of them like ZY and ZY2, or ZY2 and ZY2 prime, which are the same twist, but in opposite directions. Um, it's kind of a quirk of how the program works. Um, if we want a different layer mask, you could do say uh, one to negative two. Um, so negative two, negative one would be the farthest layer, uh, would be uh, this, um, farthest from R. Negative two would be the second farthest. So now when I do that, it'll do two layers. And the reason you might want to use the negative numbers is if I'm on a bigger cube, you see now it moves five layers at once. Um, you can thank Luna for, for that idea. So um, there's also other options here I'll just quickly go over. Grip just grips a cell and a layer mask. And in fact, you could have it grip just a cell or just a layer mask. Uh, for example, the way that these numbers up here are implemented is that if I go to layers, they're just gripping a layer mask, but no cell. And so that overrides the layers when you go to do a move. And similarly, the uh, basic or in the default set, um, a lot of these keys don't include a layer mask. That's why the layer mask is excluded by default, but they do grip a cell. And so that way you can grip a cell and a layer mask separately uh, and then do a twist. So, um, yeah, uh, the other, other options here, uh, we have recenter, which just moves a cell to the center. Um, there are some rotations that are not accessible using recenter. Um, for example, if you want to uh, do this rotation, um, that's not a recenter. The way that you would do that is using twist one dot dot minus one to select all of the layers. And we want to rotate around I, right? I stays fixed here. Oops. And that's an I Y rotation. So now if I press G, it does that rotation. Uh, the only rotation you cannot do in a single move is a 4D double rotation. So like if I wanted to do this at the same time as that, uh, there's just no way to bind that to a single key right now. Um, there's also filter, so you can switch between keybind filter or switch between piece filters using a keybind. Um, I'll cover piece filters in another video. Um, you can switch to different keybind sets. So you can set up a keybind to switch to a different set. So if I set this to RKT, now when I press G, you'll see it'll switch to RKT mode. And you'll need another key in RKT mode to switch back to default. Um, I like using escape for that, or which I have in the place of caps lock. Um, and lastly, view preset. Um, which this is uh, ties in with settings view here. Um, you can, let's say you want a keybind to change the 4D FOV. You could make a separate view preset and save that. Then now we could set this to activate A. So now if I press G, it'll switch change the 4D FOV. Um, I don't know if anyone's actually used that in speed solves, but I'd be interested to see if it's useful. So uh, there you go. I think that is uh, everything to do with how to set up your own keybinds in Hyperspeed Cube. Um, I uh, yeah, I recommend experimenting and try to see what you can come up with. 
it's probably good to learn the the default keybinds before you get too creative, because um, these are are a, a very good set of defaults that that like there's a reason these are default. Uh, the RKT set that comes with the program is only really good if you have already used Ryan Heese's uh, 3D Rubik's Cube simulator, because they're based on that. If you don't know what I'm talking about and these look totally alien to you, then uh, just completely ignore this and make your own RKT bindings. <laughs> um, in fact, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of what that might look like. So I'm going to click Edit Keybind Sets, and we're going to type in Better RKT, and hit Enter. So now we have a Better RKT. Um, I'm going to add new keybinds. So what I like to do, what I recommend for RKT is we're going to have E and D control the uh, I cell. So I'm going to have the left hand control I and the right hand control R. So, oops, here we go. So we twist, twist, twist. Uh, So, and you can watch in the keybinds reference here as I start plugging these things in. So these are all going to control I. Um, there's a neat trick you can do if you go to edit as plain text. Um, this will represent each keybind as in plain text. So I can just copy paste this a few times. And that's also a great way to share keybind sets or uh, transfer between computers or browsers. So these are all control I. Let's have this key should um, do IR. This one should do IR prime. Whoops. This should be Y, Y prime, Z prime, Z. So now I can use my left hand to rotate the I cell. And I'm going to add the typical keybinds. So if I import the basic twists here, um, these are actually doing nothing because I have no way to grip a cell. So what I could do is add, say, F and make that grip 1R. Oops. So now if I hold down F, uh, why did that? Oh, wait, why is that? Ah, G. Let's make it G. So now if I hold down G, uh, I can use the right hand to control the R cell. But I don't want to have to hold down G because this is RKT. We're going to be doing a lot of I and R. So I'm going to copy all of these to make a set for controlling R. OK, so now I have. Uh, Oops. OK, so now I can use the right hand to control R. And when you're doing RKT, mostly you'll want these two moves. So I can now do, say, an, let's undo. I can do an RKT soon. There we go. Very easy. One key per move. Now, another thing you might want, you might want some control over other, um, other layers, other faces, cells. So I could add a key here, say, I want to use X, maybe to control the left cell. So I can make x be grip 1L. Now, because I included basic twists here, if I'm holding x, you'll notice that the basic twists takes priority over these moves. Um, so the rules of how Hyperspeed Cube resolves keybinds is the first rule is that only one move is ever done per key press. So as soon as, you, as, soon as it does a move, no more moves can happen. But keybinds are evaluated uh, from top to bottom. So first it goes through all of your includes. And then it goes through all of these keys. So if I'm holding X, it's going to notice the basic twist key binds first and say, oh, you're gripping L. So this will do L moves via basic twists. But if L is not gripped, if nothing's gripped, then these basic twists can't do anything. So it'll proceed and find these R moves and execute those instead. So this is a great way that you can kind of have defaults. Um, but then if you're gripping something, it'll uh, it'll respect the grip instead. So now we have some L control in our set where we can do I and R, or I and R moves. Um, I think that is, that is everything. That shows you how to set up your own keybind sets. Um, you can also reorder them. 
Um, yeah, that's all. Stay tuned for my next video on peace filters.